Hello and welcome to Jazz Tonight. I'm Michael Jacoby, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaza and host of Raising the Standards on KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. Delighted to have you with us as we continue our summer tribute to the great Chet Baker with the return of uh, resident artist Paula West. Hi. Hey, pal. Yes. How are you? Fine. Fine. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's good to have you back and uh, you are... Uh, you are a regular with us, and we're, uh, we're, we're so delighted. And things are going well with you? Yes, yeah? yes, thank you. Um, looking forward to going back to New York this fall. Well, let's talk a little bit about venues. Okay. Um, and if you hear some strange noises in the background, uh, that's Satchmo, which is, uh, everyone knows Satchmo's going, I can better get paid for this. Uh, Satchmo is a French bulldog that if you've ever seen Paul at work, you've seen him, and, uh, and while, uh, I'll give the usual disclaimer, you won't see this till after Paula is probably winging her way to New York. If uh, you didn't catch the concert, you will, uh, you will have seen uh, Satchmo that evening as well. All right, let's talk about venues, mm -hmm. favorite venues. Well, I, in, I like Dizzy's in New York right. very much. I'm going to be back at uh, Feinstein's at the Nico okay. in February. That's I, a great little room. I, yes. Yes, it is. It used to be the Raz room, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And I enjoy uh, doing uh, things at uh, SF Jazz. Mm -hmm. we did a we did something actually? It was with Kim Nally and Tiffany Austin with um, Angela Davis. Oh, really? In, in May. How interesting! It was great. Yeah. It was uh, women in song because she had written a book mm -hmm. uh, years earlier, and we were interpreting different uh, tunes, yeah. there was a feminist uh, twist to it. It was really lovely and, sh and great to meet this iconic right. woman. Well, you know, it's interesting because we were talking baseball, as we often do before the show on the set, and, you, and we went through that period where this, the, you got this stylish stadium like Camden Yards and you got AT&T, and we kind of gone through that in jazz that started with Lincoln Center, which mm -hmm. is a jazz center yes. where you've got all different sizes of mm -hmm. venues within it, and now San Francisco jazz follows yeah, suit. Yeah, and that's, they, you know, copied it or uh, emulated it from uh, going to Lincoln Center, and they do a great job. They have great yeah. sound. Yeah. They're very organized, and they're, they're, they're doing really well. With the, well, despite the size of the theater, now the theaters uh -huh. at Lincoln uh, uh, Time Warner range from a few hundred to, I guess it's the, 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 uh, Rose, the Rose, Room Rose Hall. 1,200 or something? Uh, I think it's 2,000. Is it? Okay. And they have the Appel Room, which, which is, is like 500. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Overlooking Columbus Circle yeah, in the park. Yeah. And Dizzy's is around 150, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've seen you at SF Jazz in their big room, which is Minor called... Minor Auditorium. Okay, and that's 700 or something? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I love working there also. Yeah. That's where the Angela Davis yeah. uh, production was at. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, folks. Uh, a lot of folks in Los Gatos and Syria are by coastal and get back uh, to New York and the East Coast a lot. Let's talk about some of the little clubs back there that you're particularly fond of in, the, in New York. Uh, Dizzy's. Dizzy's. At, at Jazz Standard. Yeah. I also now, Jazz Standards is cool because it's downstairs from yeah. a restaurant called Smoke, which great, is pretty good great, barbecue. It place. is good food. Yeah. It yeah. is good food. Yeah. You know, sometimes those things are mutually exclusive. Yes, exactly. The music you and to, the, you yeah. have to eat the food. I hope you like the entertainment. Yeah, yeah. and I also I'm going to be at Mesro in October, which is. Did you ever go there yet? No, that's across the street from Smalls. It's right? great. It's a really great club. And you were telling me on the way in that it's a great deal because you can buy you one cover. Buy one cover and then you can hop on across the street yeah. wherever you start at. Now, and we're not talking jazz, but have you been back to Hudson Yards since that was finished? I have not been I there yet. I understand it's spectacular. You didn't go when it No, were? we didn't go, and, and, uh -huh. I, and I thought of it on the way back. Oh. And, you know, it drives my wife crazy because I've got a list of so many things. Uh -huh. But uh, that's when they did the big did, sculpture. Yeah. Did yeah. you go to the High Line? Yes, I've done that. Okay. I've done that before. Yeah. yeah. So I, I and I, I like Birdland also yeah. as a, a venue. You play the Vanguard? I, no, yeah. Well, you know, they hardly ever have. Yeah. Vocalist at the Oh, is that right? Okay. Jane Monheit was one of the few. Yeah. I mean, it's it's they they. I think that Natalie is extremely Douglas rare. did a gig no. there. She didn't. No. It is, is it extre Barbara Streisand did a gig. Oh, did she? Okay. So all right. <laughs> Oops. Uh oh. Is it going to be okay, okay there? All right. We're good. Uh, so uh, 
it's very rare that they have vocalists there. Yeah. I think Jane Monheit was, when she was there, it was like they hadn't had a vocalist in years. And also, I think Cecile McLaurin Savant has yes. been there. Well, we're, we're starting a new thing we have in the last couple shows on Jazz Tonight. We're actually not only having a conversation with the artist, but also showing a clip of them at work. We have a clip here from the Yerba Buena uh, Jazz Festival. Yes. And the tune? I'm not, oh, ain't, oh, gonna, let, oh, I ain't <laughs> gonna let nobody turn me down. All right. Let's turn me around. Turn you around. Yes. <laughs> Paula West from Yerba Buena, Yerba Buena Jazz. Let's watch it. Oh, that's a great clip. Do you uh, you like performing? I mean, obviously, you like performing here. It is an outside I love it. venue. Yes. But uh, I guess there is to a point where there's a diminishing return. If it gets too too big of a venue, does does that kind of do you feel an intimacy with your your audience that you like if having? Really, that, if they're that really, you lose? if they're really loving it and yeah. and okay. listening. It, okay. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So you do Yankee Stadium if they listen, right? Ah, uh, <laughs> sure. But it, you know what? But that kind of thing would be more. You you can't like get a real lyric yeah. uh, centric uh, uh, song when, yeah. it, when it's yeah. when it's yeah. an intimate things you can. Yeah. They can you know it's like you're sitting sitting in their living room or something and you're having a conversation. Yeah. So if it's one con yeah. one person talking, but. <laughs> We're talking with Paula West, our dear friend and resident artist here at Jazz on the Plaza. I want to take a moment to thank uh, the good folks at Willow Street and the Willow Street family of restaurants, uh, including Main Street, Willow Street Tap Room in, uh, in Willow Glen. You love Willow Street. I do. You have a glass I of do. wine and pasta every I, year. Oh, yeah. You know it. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, know, I it. know You know what I'm, I'm going to have. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and we'll also get it out of the way. You love the Toll House. Yes, I do. It's a perfect yes, place to Yes, it's very stay. nice. Very comfortable. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, let's take a little clip. We'll show you what's happening over at the tap room. We'll be back with Paula West on Jazz tonight. 
And we're back uh, to jazz tonight. Uh, while it's front of mind, we were talking about it's difficult for a big venue for an artist to do real intimate lyrics. Uh, and Kurt Elling's the kind of guy who is kind of requires a smaller room. Yeah. Because he's always is very, you do a lot of thinking about his lyrics. Yes. So that's yes. interesting. So let's, let's talk about the R word because we haven't done it in a long time. Yeah. Your last CD. You have four, five CDs? I have four CDs. Four CDs. Yes. And you did the one live. That was at the Jazz Standard. That was Standard. at the yeah. Jazz Standard, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you're due. Yes, I know, because I've got a lot more material. Yeah. A lot of, of time has passed, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of material. And, and I'm thinking about, I, I think it would be great to do it while I was in New York. Yeah. At that you want to do another live album? I don't think I want to do a live one yeah. this time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I'd like to go into the studio and... Uh, do an album, thinking about calling it Resist. Yeah, uh, a friend great. had suggested that uh, because of a, the times, times yeah. now. Uh, you were also talking about, because you've had, I, I, I hate the phrase you've made it your own, but your arrangement, your version of Like a Rolling Stone mm -hmm. has really become a jazz classic. Oh, well, uh, thank you. And uh, I'm assuming you're going to do it at the, at the show of because course. it is so wonderful. And I love doing it. But we talked about um, uh, doing a whole... As a matter of fact, I've talked about in a couple of years maybe doing Dylan as our theme because there are so many great well, tunes. that and, would be a great and idea. And you really kind of... Uh, you pretty much started it in a popular standpoint. There wasn't a, a lot of Dylan arrangements no. for jazz. No. But there, there's a great song called I Threw It All Away. You know that song? It's beautiful lyrics, but uh, but you do what I love about you. You do subterranean homesick blues. Uh -huh. and, yeah, did you see the Alt Dylan show? Because I did. No, I didn't. You did it in the city. Uh, I did it at uh, SF Jazz. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they had wanted to bring it back after he won his Nobel Prize yeah. for literature, yeah. but the timing was off. And I did it actually at uh, with SF performances at the Herps yeah. back in Has January. He seen it? No, no, in my dreams. <laughs> in my dreams. What? Give me a couple of the tunes other than uh, Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. Don't Think Twice, I do Just Like a Woman. You said Subterranean, yeah. Homesick Blues. Yeah. Uh, the Times They Are Changing. Yeah. Uh, I, I have like about it, 13 or and 14 they're, they're songs. Just, and they're great. Who does, do you do the arrangements? Um, Adam helped. Your, and also, uh, yes. George Mester Hazy did uh, yeah. some of the arrangements when he was still around, and but Adam did a lot of them, and Bruce Barth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had Curtis Steigers here last week, and uh, he did a tune on one of his CDs called San Diego Serenade, I think, which oh. is a Tom Waits tune. Oh. And so that's, you know, it's it, these wow. really obscure tunes. It's like the Johnny Cash would do that with CDs and, uh -huh. and songs. I mean, I, I think it's just a totally hip and proves my point, uh, and, I, and I've said it so many times, that the Great American Songbook did not end with Rodgers and Hart. No. Is that there has been uh, so many great tunes. Yes. Written since then. That are going to be around forever. 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 In addition, Bob Dylan, you yeah. have the Beatles, yeah. um, Leonard Cohen. There's, there's yeah. just so many... Uh, Oh. You do some Leonard Cohen stuff, you have. I have not, okay. and also uh, jo Joni Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, Joni you know. Mitchell, that she, which they just had, a, she turned 75 and just had a retrospective. Yeah. 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 And she's doing better now, health wise. Good. Yeah. Good. So, okay, so if we do an album called Resist, you do a lot of, of the protest stuff? There'd, be, there'd be, yes. Okay. Yes, it would be, uh, yeah. Okay. Definitely a protesting about a lot of yeah. a lot of things yeah. freedom of speech yeah. is a, a big one uh, feminism, fem or is, feminism. Yeah, or is the the, the uh, great soccer cheer equal pay 
great. I'm so happy for oh, the women's I'm so, team. Yeah, for I mean, them, that was I'm, just And you know what I everything. love is they go, we make, and I think whether it's half as much as the men, it's less, have, it's 18%. But Lord knows we have a lot more trophies. <laughs> and we, you know, and 18, we're doing a lot better. 18%, like the cap for the women's, they, yeah. well, if they win the World Series, it's 250000 but for the men, it's $1.1 million. With, and look at our U.S. team. Yeah. Have the, the men have not delivered they've, at all. I don't know that they've ever made the quarters. No, but, uh, they have not. Yeah. You soccer fan? I love watching you, the World Cup. So do I. I'm exactly I the same. I love watching the World Cup. Unfortunately, I have to learn the rules of soccer every four years. <laughs> yeah, you, have to, you have to be reminded to of figure, things, but I, I love watching the World Cup. Uh, okay, let's talk real quickly because we're going to start wrapping okay. up. Okay. When, um, when are you going back to New York? I'll be at Mesro in October, okay. 4th and 5th. And Dizzy's the week before Thanksgiving, the 22nd through the 24th. Um, first time I saw you in New York was with my friend Barney Adams, the guy that owned the golf uh, company, and mm -hmm. it was at the Russian restaurant. Oh, Firebird. Firebird. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, and also. And I think I saw you at the Algonquin. Yes, she did. Which unfortunately yes. they, they've since closed. Yeah, that, which I, was I loved a, being there. I was there every fall. Yeah. And which is my favorite time of year to be there. Yeah. It was just, I, I, yeah. I never took that for granted. I loved it. But also, uh, Ed Cherry isn't going to be able to do Dizzy's. So yeah. Russell Malone is, is oh, going is to be. He? Russell oh, Malone wonderful. will be playing with us. So I'm really well, excited that cool. about that. That would be very cool. Yes. Uh, and for the folks that aren't sneaking back to the Big Apple, you've got a gig coming up in a couple of weeks at Feinstein's. Next Feinstein's uh, Valentine's oh, season. You know, oh, you love birds. Come you on can, out. Yeah, you could do the. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not. It's not going to be all. The, you could do the Dudley Moore thing. But I think I played that for oh, you before. <laughs> it's not going to be all romance. You're yeah. going to get all the aspects That's of right. uh, of love. Yeah, Paula West. It is uh, uh, as our resident artist. You're here every year, and we we couldn't be happier. You um, and you come back with a a, a fresh look. On, on this uh, genre that we all love, and uh, you have never mailed it in, and I'm uh, eternally grateful for that. Oh, thank you. Thank God you. bless you. It's good to see you, my Oh, life. thank you so Take much. Take care. All right. Next week, our buddy John Prue is, but you know Prue? You know I've John Prue? Yeah. You'll love him. He's, yeah. uh, he's in town, and uh, actually, John, who's been since the sixth or seventh time, He's up there with you and Giacomo with the number of times he's here. But he had done an album called Baker's Dozen, which was kind of the inspiration for uh, paying tribute to Chet this year. Uh, so we'll talk to John next week. Thanks to Willow Street and their family of restaurants. That's Jazz Tonight. Until next time, I'm Mike Jacoby. I'll see you soon.